So our next speaker is Brian. He is uh, Ruby is working on the Rails. He believes in de developer happiness, which means productivity and being able to go home on time to his lovely family. He believes, and that's about it. Let's get going. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. So there's no slides for today. I'm just going to attempt something that I've not done before. So please pardon me if you find this not entertaining enough. So, um, so my name is Brian. I'm a, I'm a Singaporean. I'm from this small uh, Singapore-based company called The Amazing Digital Asia, in short, TADA. Um, I happen to be a NUS student as well right now. And today, my presentation is going to be like this, right? I'm going to show you uh, slides through lines of uh, text here. So there will be 28 lines of text. Uh, who here uses Termina uh, on a daily basis? Right. All right. So, uh, all right. Um, let me just shift this. Uh, is it okay? Yes. Okay. So, I actually don't know what's coming up next. So, I'm just going to press the next number and hope that uh, everything turned out fine. Um, and I'm going to talk about developer happiness, right? So, uh, who here has it's your own ver version of developer happiness? Right, uh, maybe some shout out productivity. Anyone? Productivity? Money? Money? Right? So, uh, there's various, depending on what type of developer you are, if you are working for the banks, maybe money, right? Um, if you are, I don't know, working for yourself, then you might want to focus on getting work done. Um, but anyway, depending on what kind of developer you are, right, uh, you have a different type of definition for developer happiness, am I right? So, um, here are some lists of happiness that I can compile. And uh, for me, going back home to my family, you know, early is really important. And of course, getting work done, uh, making, making software great, right? So, um, then what about terminal shortcuts? What about uh, developer happiness? What are all these about, right? If you look at all happiness, right, there's one common uh, denominator, which is your workflow, right? Your daily workflow. If you have a good daily workflow, just like you have a good coffee each day, you will, you will go home happy, right? You will, um, uh, so today we are going to talk about terminal workflow in particular, and I'm going to talk about alias dot file. Uh, who here do not know what I'm talking about, alias dot file, or who here uses alias and dot file on a daily basis, right? All right. So how do you generate uh, alias? You, you, type, you type it in, right? So I'm not sure what's next. Let's see. Right, you, you type uh, this syntax, right, into your dot file, right? So, um, dot file, so this is alias, this is the syntax of alias. And uh, dot file, a good place to start is uh, this URL from uh, GitHub. Uh, you can actually clone it uh, from various popular repo. Um, dot file, if you do not know, in case you do not know that, uh, your shell start the dot file before uh, anything else starts, right? So uh, alias within a dot file will be loaded in the system. So alias is like a terminal shortcut that I'm referring to today. And manually doing that uh, will require you to uh, write in the dot files. So, uh, so over here, dot .files are unique com programs configured to uh, its hidden files. Um, and then what's next? 
And your terminal shortcuts uh, are personal, right? What works for you might not work for someone else. Uh, what works for me, you might not want to uh, take it up. So, so cloning uh, um, alias or dot file from someone else might not work for you eventually, and you want to have the power to man, man, um, edit it on the fly, or change it on the go, uh, change your workflow to optimize your what. Uh, you want to achieve at the end of the day, right? And let's see what's next. So imagine that there's different combination of alias out there, and you can potentially uh, have a different type of workflow for different projects. So um, is there a better way to uh, generate and destroy alias, right? So it's worth a try. So I'm going to try it today. And um, What's next? So let's start with generating and destroying alias, right? To um, create alias manually is not difficult, am I right? It just involves four steps, right? So um, you need to you need to uh, open dot file. So I'm going to I'm going to just do this, right? So I'm going to uh, as you know I'm using the sh here. I'm not using bash. So um, uh, I need to open my ZSH RC. And over here, so I open it. The usual, usual steps are like this. Uh, I type the alias, something else, because there's something already, if I'm not wrong. So I save it. And then I come back to here. I source it. And then I can use something else, right? Or another way is that I, I just do this alias, uh, tem alias, right? And just type in right, a command. And this will work, right? But the problem is that if you open a new shell, that disappear, right? So how do you use it on server? How do you uh, generate permanent alias um, really on the fly? So today's talk, um, I'm going to introduce, um, so what, let me see, 11C. So I was talking about 11D, writing alias manually, uh, E, and then you got to save and source. And I'm going to introduce today, uh, aka a Ruby gem that uh, helps you manage and uh, grow your alias on the go, right? So um, let's see, what is this? All right, so this is the basic command of AKA. To install it, it's really simple. So I just need to do gem install AKA2. If you are wondering like why AKA2 is because AKA is taken up. <laughs> so, I'm just going to install AKA. Um, well, it's going to take a while. And once it's done, you just need to do AKA setup and press enter. But since I already have AKA, so I can simply just run it. And you can see that these are, there's 149 aliases on my system. And um, uh, and this pretty much works like alias, right? If you type alias, right? So AKA really study the syntax of alias and uh, we want to make it better, right? So um, now, 12. So this is a syntax to generate uh, alias. So if I want to uh, say uh, so AKA G, Maybe is there a git cam? Let's find git cam. Oh, there's no git cam, so let's generate. So I type generate git cam. Uh, echo hello git cam, right? Um, done, created. And if you type it now, it says hello git cam. Open a new shell. Hello git cam, right? So what I just did is that. Uh, I, I manually created a permanent 
alias on the fly. Uh, and this can be useful on, on server, on your daily sysadmin, on your local machine. And I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you a few examples how I use it on, on my daily basis, right? So, uh, now, great. So, next, I, I will show you. So, generating an alias is, is good, but uh, I need to remove it, right? So, uh, imagine that I have 150 alias now, and uh, if I want to remove GitCam, right, the, the alias that I just created, I simply type aka destroy and type the name of the shortcut that I created, right? So, and this will remove it, and if I try to assess it, you'll be gone, right? So that's, that's uh, expected. So, um, oh, by the way, if you, if you are lazy, like me, so you just type G instead of generate, so it follows the syntax of Rails as well. So you can do git cam, right? Uh, hello. And that works as well. For destroy, you can just use D, right? So for the full commands, you can just do aka-h, and you can see all the commands over here. So what's next? 14, edit, right? So uh, am I able to edit without opening text? Uh, yeah, sure. So, aka edit. Do I have git cam? Uh, git cam, right? Um, and I can say hello world instead of hello, right? So, now basically, aka changes from echo hello to echo hello world, right? So, if I type git cam again, uh, it changes, right? So so far, uh, it's just printing printing statement. That's nothing useful, right? But what about uh, what about uh, calling your server, right? Calling your maybe sidekick, calling your uh, uh, cleaning up database. All these can be usually you uh, where do you put it? Uh, script. Or um, uh, you you probably put it in a script, right? But alias is faster. Alias is easier to generate if you do not need to manually generate it. So um, if you want to edit the name, you can do that. That's the command. And uh, if you want to simply not wait for prompt, you can also do that. So if let's say I want to edit git cam, and I just want to edit it from on the go, so I can say uh, maybe a hello Lawrence, right? So uh, Lawrence over there. So uh, yeah. So you can you can do that. So that's the syntax. So uh, what's next? Okay, aka help. So you can type help. You can you can get all the commands. Seventeen. So imagine using terminal shortcuts on your server on your day-to-day -day basis, uh, and even sharing with your team, right? So if you do aka, you can actually just copy and paste the whole thing to any medium that you are you are communicating with your team, and if they have aka installed, they can just copy and paste since. Uh, you know, AK generate is over here, right? For each wrapping around each alias. So um, instead of manually doing the four step each time you want to create a shortcut, with AKA you can actually change your workflow on the fly to match your uh, daily needs, right? So so. Whatever I just described, right, it's all about command reusing, right? It's just like um, what you do for code reusing. Uh, you, do, you do not repeat yourself. You, you try your best to reuse each code 
you just write once and reuse each uh, each segment of code. So uh, AK is about command reusing, right? Just like uh, code reusing. And here's some demo. So so uh, let me. Am I in the directory? Okay. So I'm going to create. Uh, I'm going to just show how I uh, import some bootstrap uh, statics file into a Rails project uh, using alias. So previously, I already have. I downloaded uh, some bootstrap. Um, I think it's here. Well, yeah, it's on the desktop. So um, there are various ways to do this. I'm not preaching that uh, you should do it uh, using the alias way because the, you can do it uh, either through gem, right? You just gem, you just insert the bootstrap uh, gem file that is supported by another maintainer, uh, or you can manually drag your assets file right into the assets. But uh, if you're doing it on a uh, frequent basis, then then you might want to just create an alias, right? That does that. So I'm going to create a, a, a Rails project called To Do. But um, usually, if you want to create a Rails project, you do Rails New something, right? Uh, and then followed by the the database. But uh, I I already have a shortcut that's created, so. Let's do so. Let's see. AKA find Rails PG, right? So that's the shortcut. So I'm going to just do this to do's. Uh, okay, wait. Let me just go to the demo folder. And I'm going to do Rails PG um, uh, to do's, right? So that effectively generate a Rails app with. Uh, Postgres, and uh, while waiting for it, let's just open a new and go to to dos and um, server. Right, usually you will do real server, but uh, I already have a shortcut installed. So sorry, just do server and. Let's open localhost, and you expect that uh, the front page, right, the welcome page, and now how? Do, so if usually you want to create a scaffold, you do rail generate scaffold, and maybe task, and include uh, say name of the task, and description. And uh, maybe maybe completed by right. So date time, um, and that that will. So that's quite a quite a command, right? It's like this long. But if you have a shortcut, uh, maybe you just do resource. So let's go and delete the resource, right? So I'm going to delete task, and I can do resource task, and. Uh, Probably copy and paste this. Okay. Right. So, right. So, so uh, it's sort of shortened. And if you are going to do it on a daily basis, or um, maybe you are maintaining two rails or three rails project on the go, you might want to look at your workflow and see uh, what are the steps that you always repeat and reuse that command. Uh, so once this is done, you create a, a, a resource. Uh, if you reload, I think Rails will complain that you need to migrate. So usually you need to, as usual, you need to uh, type this command, um, Rails DB create, Rails DB migrate. But uh, for this time, just migrate. Um, and there's an error. So I'm going to, okay, uh, drop it. Okay, one second. Couldn't drop. All oh, right, this is good. Uh, okay. 
okay uh, so uh, okay migrate right so this is done and I'm gonna refresh and I'm gonna to go to task right so so that's created by rails um, now if I want to create uh, if I want to move bootstrap in right uh, I can simply type bootstrap uh, which is a shortcut sorry not bootstrap but <laughs> bootstrap right so I can type bootstrap and that will just changes immediately without you adding uh, you know you are, you are simply what changes is that you did not maybe previously you need to edit the gem file you need to add a uh, uh, gem bootstrap uh, SASS but right now you are directly interacting with the assets with the JavaScript or with the CSS that you uh, previously uh, downloaded right so um, so where where was I? Maybe nineteen. Is it nineteen? Uh, code reusing. Okay, twenty demo. Twenty one. Uh, twenty two. Is there commercial break? Commercial break. Uh, Git can is awesome. Uh, How is it code reusing? Sorry. So code reusing. Um, so you can actually pre. Uh, so let's say you have created some views or you created some models you can from a previous project and you want to reuse them uh, you can simply just use create a shortcut that move all these files uh, into your new projects so uh, uh, what I have demo is that I just move a bootstrap file that I downloaded from the internet right so uh, um, does that answer your question right so so um, the future version of AKA, right? So right now it's just uh, the is a it's really simple. You just edit. You are able to add, uh, destroy, edit, and probably list the alias, right? So um, uh, there are actually a few future features that I want to talk about, which is uh, community aliases. So Im imagine that your workflow, your shortcuts are different from mine. So if I'm able to share, if I'm able to have a, a common platform where we can share aliases and we can download and uh, try it out, uh, everyone's, you know, every workflow, everybody's uh, productivity will, will probably increase. Um, so um, next will be better tests. So right now, there's no way to really effectively test uh, a command line tool like AKA, right? So besides uh, BAT that is created by uh, the creator of RBEMV, there's really no effective way to do that. So uh, there's a need to have, write a better test. And last but not least, the uh, group aliases, right? So imagine that you have, you have software projects uh, that uh, requires you to have two shortcuts that call commands, right? Shortcut one, which is call command. Uh, shortcut one, which is call server. Shortcut two, which is also call server. But both shortcuts, right, needs to have different commands, right? So right now, there's no way to do that. Right now, there's only a global list of alias where where all alias are unique, right? So if we can have uh, duplicated alias, group alias, uh, we, for different projects, uh, that would be awesome, right? So, so for example, so this is just a prototype. You can, you can, you are, be, you are able to like say AKA group. Right now, th there's no such command, but if you are, uh, if we can create a feature like this, you can show, all the shortcuts that's within the project, 
right? So all the projects that you clone from uh, GitHub um, will have these uh, shortcuts that probably your, your teams use on a daily basis or your organization use on a daily basis. So, um, so that's 15, no, 18. So that's all. Uh, and we're actually looking for people to contribute. If you think that this might be an uh, interesting open source project, you know, do let me know. Uh, and the URL is over there. Uh, and that's it. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, sure. How is this better than Alias? I mean, apart from the fact that it depends on Ruby, uh, I can do it better than Alias. Or yeah, you you can do that. So as I said, right? If you so you can create. Are you referring to this Alias? No, just like Bash Alias. I can edit and, and I maintain my dog files and I share my dog files on GitHub, uh, and I can find other people's dog files on GitHub as well. Yeah, that's right. So. Uh, I think it's covering different aspect of uh, creating alias, right? You can, so you have to open your dot file, right? But I do that a lot. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, uh, so what AKA does is that it changes from four step to one step, and you can do it on the fly. So let's say that if you're on a server, uh, you, you. Uh, you really want to create a shortcut and you don't want to break your workflow, so you can create using a AKA, you know, you can create a permanent alias. I not. Echo into my dog file. Well, you, you can, so you, you have to type like, uh, yeah, a, a longer line. So I think AKA provides a structure for you to create uh, shortcuts easier. Yeah. Uh, that's right. So, uh, so his question is, uh, if there's so many alias, is it hard to keep track of? Uh, will it pollute your global alias? Um, so, the goal of the project is to really manage your alias. So, uh, there's actually a function which is, which I wrote, but it's broken, which is usage. So, the idea is that you can key in usage. I think it's broken, yeah. So the idea is that you can key in usage, like it can show you by analyzing history file and to show you like which alias you are using most often. And uh, hopefully that you can, you can trim your alias, you can manage your alias. Uh, if you created an alias two years ago and you, you haven't been using it, you probably should just uh, remove it or move it somewhere else. So, um, so I don't think that AKA is preaching that you should grow as many alias as possible, but rather quality alias. How, how does AKA uh, store its um, So we are not. So we are effectively writing into a doc file. So how does AKA store its alias? We are writing it into a doc file, and we are uh, reloading it for you every time you generate or destroy an alias. So. Um, Right now, AKA only works for Bash or ZSH. For ZSH, uh, you can reload it by calling it. But for Bash, right, uh, what I'm doing is that uh, I insert a code into Bash file, into the dot file, to say reload itself. And at, after each time that I generate an alias, uh, I will call the code and say, hey, you, uh, dot file, please reload yourself so that you uh, effectively do not need to source it each time you create your alias. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So basically, if you're working on a server, you just copy the dot file. Sorry. If you're working on a server and you want to use the same shortcut, you copy the dot file. Yeah, that's right. Any other question? Okay, so...
Thanks, guys.